In this video, we are going to take this um, conic equation and we are going to try and graph it. Um, so one of the first things that I want to do is just kind of recognize what kind of equation I have going on. Because um, it's either going to be a circle, could be a parabola, could be an ellipse, or it could be a hyperbola. So the first thing that I recognize is I have squares on two different variables, so it can't be a parabola. Um, and then it can't be an ellipse or a circle because I have a subtraction between the two. Uh, as far as these pieces matching, doesn't matter. As soon as you see a minus sign, you have yourself a hyperbola. So regardless of if it's a circle, ellipse, or hyperbola, we're going to complete the square on this. So the first thing I need to do is reorganize kind of some of my numbers a little bit. Um, and by doing that, I mean I'm going to take my y's and group them together. So I got 4y squared plus 24y and then minus x squared plus 4x. Um, and then I'm going to move the 28 over to the other side equals a negative 28. All right, second thing I'm going to do is I need to complete the square on these, but I have to factor off any values attached to the squares. So I have to factor a 4 off of this. And when I factor that, I'm actually factoring it off of both of these. So that's going to be a plus 6y. And then I'm going to leave a, some space to be able to complete the square with that. And then technically, I'm factoring a negative off of this x squared which means this is positive 4 is going to turn into a negative 4 because we're factoring the negative or the positive factoring the negative out of a positive making it a negative and then I'm going to add something to here to complete the square now on the other side whatever I'm adding to the left I should be adding to the right so I'm adding but whatever this value is there's going to be a 4 that's going to get distributed to it so I'm going to kind of start by planning for that it's going to be 4 times something and then uh, whatever gets added here, technically a negative is going to get distributed to it. So I have a negative 1 that's going to multiply to whatever I'm going to populate here. So i got to complete the square. So I'm going to take that 6, and I'm going to do two things to it to complete the square. I'm going to divide it by 2, and I'm going to square it. And that 9 is what I add to this quadratic to complete the square. So if I added it here, I'm going to add it here. So technically, again, that's a 36 that's really being added in. So that'll turn into a 36. And then I'll take the negative 4, divide it by 2, and square it. So that's a 4, but it's really going to be a negative 4 when you kind of put all that stuff together. Um, and so we look to factor this. So what multiplies to nine that adds to six, and that's gonna be three. It's actually gonna be that number inside the box there. So this is gonna factor into y plus three and y plus three. So I can write it quick uh, with an exponent on it instead of writing it out twice. And then minus uh, what multiplies to four adds to negative four. It's gonna be that negative two right there. And then if I add all this stuff together, I got a 36 minus a 28 minus a 4. That adds up to 4. All right, so I need this to equal 1. So I'm going to divide that by 4, which means I'm going to divide everything by 4. So I am going to have, um, that turns into a 1. So y plus 3 squared, I'm going to put it over 1, minus x minus 2 squared over 4 equals 1. All right, so finally, I've manipulated this or converted this into a graphing form of, um, of a hyperbola. So first thing I want to mess with is my center. My center, this is, this is my x value, so that's going to be 2 and negative 3. Um, by the way, this since the y is, it's y's minus x's, that means your graph is going to be vertical. So it's going to have this direction and this direction to it. Just kind of when we draw our picture, just kind of want to make sure I have an idea where we're going. So our center's at 2, negative 3. Um, our a value is under the x's always. So our a value is the square root of this, because this is a squared. 
So our A is 2, which means we're going left and right 2. And then this is our B value, so this is our up and down. So the square root of 1 is 1. And again, the purpose of that is it helps us draw a, um, draw a box around it. Okay, so the reason we draw the box is because we need asymptotes. And our corners of the box line up our asymptotes. Okay, so let's finish drawing the picture. We know that it's going to be vertical, so we're going to have this up and down kind of look to it. And that's our vertices. It's our other vertices. So our vertices are going to be at um, 1, 2, negative 2. And then my other vertice is going to be at um, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. And those are the actual points like on the graph. So that would be a good time to take any of these two coordinates plug them into this, actually plug it into the original, make sure it added up to zero. That would give you an indication whether you know you did it right or wrong. Um, the equation of our asymptotes. Our asymptotes are these two linear equations. Uh, I just need to figure out the slope to them. Wonderfully that these corners are actually on the y-axis. Um, so my uh, y-intercepts are going to come right from that. So my slope is going to go up one over two. So I'm going to have a y equals 1 half x, and then this y-intercept is 1, 2, 3, 4. So down 4. And then my other one is going to be a negative 1 half, and then down 2 for that y-intercept. Um, if if the, the vertices or the y-intercepts were not on this because your graph was further away, um, you could basically potentially just do the slope a couple of times and try and see if you hit the y-axis, and then that kind of corresponds exactly to your b-value. Or um, you may remember from a different class, you may need to do um, you may need to do this, the point slope form. So you're going to have the slope. And you'll have some other point because you're going to have the corner of your box. So then you can plug in the slope, plug in your point, and then you can convert it into your equation. Uh, last piece is your focal point. So you got your c squared is going to be the sum of your denominators. So 1 plus 4. So c squared is 5. So c is the square root of 5, which is approximately 2.2. And so, because our graph is vertical, we're going to go 1, 2.2 in either direction. 1, 2.2. So there's your focal points. And to be accurate on it, um, our x value is not changing, so it's still the center of 2. And then from negative 3, we'll be adding the square root of 5. And then your other focal point will be negative 3 subtracting the square root of 5. And that was us moving down the 2.2. All right, so that is everything to that hyperbola. So that's kind of your longest one um, because you have to complete the square. It's a little tricky because you have to factor potentially a number out. You'll always have to subtract a factor out a sign because one of those two variables is going to be negative, so you'll have to factor a negative out. And then you'll have to account for the fact that you factored a negative out over here. Complete your square. You have your points for your center. And then um, you have everything else you need for your graph. And that was graphing a hyperbola.